I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do, believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. The Lord told me how He wants me to be to abide in Him and His Word in me. Anything I ask Him. Hello, everybody. I'm David Weeder, and this is the Covenant Living Broadcast. Glory to God. Hope you're having a good day today. If you're not, it's going to get better. And if you are, it's still going to get better. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, let's have a word of prayer and get right back into the Word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank You for this another opportunity to teach Your Word, to help people, to help them grow up into maturity and strong meat of the Word, that they may learn how to fully appropriate and apply the Word of Righteousness. The Word that is the power of God. Your very own power unto their healing, their deliverance, their prosperity. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness. Father, I'm asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips. Oh, as Brother Hagin used to say, that my lips would be as the pen of a ready writer. I'm asking you, sir, for revelation that I may speak accurately and precisely the oracles of God and that the people will hear accurately and precisely. Holy Spirit, minister through me, through my words, through these avenues of video and audio and the written word to minister to your people, to heal, to set free, to encourage, to bring peace in every area of their life. I'm asking it in faith and therefore I believe I receive it just that way in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. And you've been named with that name. I've been named with the name of God. The whole family, both in heaven and earth, have been named. We've got the family name. Well, that's a different subject. <laughs> Glory to God. We've got to tend to business. So, remember, well, turn with me, turn with me back to Matthew. We're going to pick up where we did the last opportunity that I had to come to you, had to be able to come to you and, and, uh, and preach the word. We're going to pick back up, and I want to remind you of a few things. So, turn with me over to uh, Matthew chapter 8. And uh, beginning in verse 5 is when you'll see the centurion come and talk to Jesus and talk to him about his servant, which was lying at home sick with the palsy. And Jesus said, I will. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Come and heal him. It's His will then. It was, it was his, heel, his will then. It is His will now. Here's an interesting thought you may not have thought before. You know, the names of God as listed in the, in the Old Covenant. Uh, you've got all the different names listed. Uh, El Shaddai, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh. Uh, you know, English pronunciations, of course. Um, but one of the names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals you. Did you ever stop and think that if, if God was going to go out of the healing business, if He was going to decide, you know what, healing is passing away, 
as soon as these apostles that are in and writing the New Testament, as soon as they die out of the earth, I'm going to change my name. How ridiculous is that? But you know, that's what he'd have to do. If healing was going to pass away and not be available to every person, every child of God, he would have to literally change his name because his name is, I am the God that heals you. He's not going to change his name. He never has. He never will. There is no shadow of changing in him. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. It's still his will today. Glory to God. The centurion answered in verse 6 and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He goes on to explain how he's a, he's a man under authority and he has men under the authority of him. And he knows how to issue a command, how to issue the word, and it be followed, and it be followed through. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. He marveled. The verse before, or that verse earlier in the verse, in verse 10 says, When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, including his own disciples that were standing right there, I have not found so great faith. So apparently, speaking the word only and expecting it to be carried out because of the authority behind it, is great faith. That's what he says. Verse 10, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Glory to God. Well, so we talked about the centurion last time. And then we went on over to Mark chapter 4. Okay? And we talked about in Mark chapter 4. Now, this is the same time frame. Matter of fact, if you back up a little bit in, in Mark, you'll find the, the centurion there. And so it's the same time frame. But he, Mark talks about a little bit different teaching that's included there, which, you know, he says there in, in, uh, in verse 34 of Mark 4, he expounded all things to his disciples. And we talked about how in Matthew, I mean, there's chapters that are just red words. I mean, Jesus is a teaching. He's a teaching. He's a teaching. He's expounding all things. And this is a, a section that Mark included in his gospel. And he's talking about the sower sows the word. Here we are, back to words. We're back to words. You know, you can't... This is a word-created word-dominated, word-controlled planet and universe and existence. But that's a different teaching. So, he talks about the sower sows the word, but he's not just talking about sowing the word. He talks about, well, as a matter of fact, uh, he, he brings it up there in verse 16, when they have heard the word. And then he brings it back down. He goes on and talks about the uh, 30, 60, and, and 100 fold uh, yields. He talks about what will actually stop the production of the word. Cares entering in will stop the word of the Almighty God from producing in your life and in my life if we let cares enter in. That's a serious business. And then he goes on to expound on that in verse 23 of Mark chapter 4. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And we talked about last time, everybody out there had these ears. He's talking about a hearing heart. 
And he said unto them, verse 24, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, or what measure you measure it, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that has, has what? Has ears to hear. To him shall be given, and he that hath not ears to hear, from him shall be taken away even that which he has. Why? Because they placed enough value to hear it, to really hear it. We talked about last time, we talked about husbands and wives and, and selective hearing, and uh, we went through all that. And not that I would do that. Of course, in Jesus' name, thank you for helping me with that, sir. And so, we talk about the priority that you give hearing the Word. The level of importance that you give it is the level of importance it will give you and it will produce in your life. Now, this is extremely important, very valuable in what we're getting ready to see here. So, so let's back up. And follow this through the timeline so we can go wide screen on this on this event that we're we're getting ready to delve into and to study. So the disciples are with Jesus, and and lots of expounding and teaching, and and they're up on the mountain, they're by the sea, they're walking, they're they're and the centurion comes up to him, and Jesus uses this illustration of the importance on the spoken word as an example of great faith. And, and, and it produced healing. The centurion's uh, servant was healed for the self-same hour. And then we go on and he's teaching. After that, he's teaching about the, the word again. But now he's talking about instead of speaking the word, he's talking about hearing the word. And, and what value you give it when you hear the spoken word of God is how much it will produce and manifest results into your life. Okay, so we got the spoken word, and then we've got how you hear the spoken word. And then immediately, look what happens. Look down here in uh, verse 33, And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. So now we kind of got it all in a nutshell. He spoke the word, they were hearing it. All right? Okay, go on down to verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, he says unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. He spoke the word. Now, go back over with me to Matthew chapter 8. I want you to see the way Matthew phrases it. Uh, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 18. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Now, that's a spoken word. It's a commandment. He gave commandment to depart unto the the other side. Mark 4, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was, into the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And continuing in 37, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. He was at perfect peace. He issued the command. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. 
and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Wow. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How could he say that? Where were they supposed to get faith? I mean, it would be unjust for him to ask how come they have no faith if they didn't have any way to get faith. Well, we serve a just God. And they had just witnessed an example of what they should have put into practice right here. God will teach you and give you examples of how to overcome every storm that Satan brings against you. They had the example of the power of the spoken word. The centurion even used the example of the soldiers. He's under authority and he has soldiers under him. He issues commands to them. Well, according to Matthew's account, Jesus issued a commandment, a command to them to go to the other side. There was power in that spoken word. The other side of that, the disciples were responsible because He had just taught them the importance and the value of how they hear the spoken word. Because how they measure it in importance is how effective it's going to be when they go to use it. Glory to God. Are you seeing this? Are you getting a hold of this? I'm telling you, this will change your life. And we're going to see, we're going to track this on, we're going to keep tracking this, and you're going to be amazed at what the Lord brings to light in this. But that... <laughs> Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans, glory to God. Word of faith. <laughs> this is a scripture right there. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. He had spoken the Word of God. Jesus said, I don't do anything I don't see my Father do, and I don't say anything that I don't hear my Father say. When, so when Jesus said, let us go to the other side, God had said, let us go to the other side. That was the spoken word of God. It was a command issued. And they heard it. But they didn't measure it high enough. They didn't give it value as the word of God. Do we see that in the church today? Oh my goodness. I've heard so many people say, well, I know the word says that, but this is what I've experienced. Well, how they measure it is how it will be measured to them. They measured what they experienced or what Uncle Fred experienced or what Grandma Susan experienced. They measured that experience higher at a higher level with more authority than they measured the Word of Almighty God. We see it all the time. You've seen it. I've seen it. I've done it. 
I'm sure you've done it. I mean, I'm not accusing or anything, but you know, if you're like the rest of the human race, <laughs> you've done it. We've all done it. Given an experience or given someone else's word a higher level of authority in what you think and how you conduct your life than what the Word of God says. I know the Word says that, but... You see what I'm talking about? Well, they, know, they knew Jesus said to go to the other side, but... But, there's a big storm out here. Jesus, you don't understand. I know you said to go to the other side, but this storm. Well... They measured it, and it was measured again. And they had to go wake Jesus up because He listens to the Word of God and values it above anything else. And when God said, go to the other side, Jesus is going to the other side. If He has to get out of the boat and walk on the water over there, He's going, bless God, because the power of God God in the word that said go to the other side is enough power to stop any storm and say peace be still and go to the other side and get the job done. The power was in the word to do it. Glory to God and we're out of time. Mm. Whoa. Whew. I'm glad I'm <clears throat> sitting down firmly because otherwise I'd be running around this place. Glory to God. I tell you, this is, we're going somewhere with this now. We ain't near finished with this. So we're going to have to pick up next time. I'll show you another element of this, and then we're going to go on into some deeper things. Glory to God. Well, whoo! <laughs> I hope you had a good time because I sure enough did. And I learned some stuff right along with uh, hopefully you learning some stuff. I know you did because we prayed at the beginning of this broadcast and, and we released our faith in the Holy Spirit's teaching. So, amen. Glory to God. Well, David Weeder again. Telling you I love you. I'll see you next time. And don't forget, Jesus is Lord.